Hey guys, good morning. Happy Thursday. It's Daryl here. It is about 2 p.m. here in Connecticut on the East Coast. I've watched Bo, the fifth column. I've watched his video three times now. Um, it's just a coincidence. A lot of times me and him are on the same page. I made a video talking about, I was very irate, seeing how a lot of people on the right are trying to portray the situation with teens coming over the border and then being held in facilities like uh, Biden's uh, detention facilities. We've seen the pictures of the trailers. And uh, so I made that video the first thing this morning and I was talking about how it's a whole different thing, first of all. Um, I think a lot of people are just centering on the phrase kids in cages. When we're talking about two totally different things here, we're talking about under the Trump administration, we were talking about separating families and basically making orphans out of kids with a good mother, a perfectly fine mother and father, separating families, zero tolerance. And what we have now is kids 13 to 17 coming across the border unaccompanied. These are two totally different situations. And I, I think, I think, I think send, focusing on the phrase uh, that these kids are locked down and imprisoned, I, I don't think that's the right way to look at it. I kind of, I don't know how to make this video because I always agree with Bo, you know, just out of, just, we're just usually on the same page, but there's, I have got to be honest with you guys, I don't know how this video is going to go over, but... I agree with most of his video. Uh, the, the money is ridiculous. You know, somebody is getting rich. Uh, a bunch of somebodies is getting rich off the whole prison industry in the United States. That needs to be reformed. Uh, the way it's set up now, the more people that, that get arrested and go to jail, the longer they go to jail for, the more a lot of these conservative Republican groups are, are getting wealthy. And then donating back to the Republican, the, uh, the GOP and... Uh, it's actually paying off to lock up minorities and other people that will end up voting. They think that might end up voting against them in the next election, too. It's a, it's a corrupt system. But, okay, now talking about these kids, it concerns me. Uh, you guys, going back to you know how I lived previously with an addiction. I, I have been to South Central Los Angeles. I have been to East L.A. Um, I've been to Skid Row. I've been to the South Bronx, um, the north end of Hartford, uh, parts of Bridgeport, Bridgeport uh, projects uh, that were known nationwide, uh, a project called Father Panic Village in Bridgeport. I, I, I've seen a lot of the stuff that goes on. Let me tell you guys, a, 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 I, I worry about these kids. Um I think we're focusing a lot. I think a lot of Democrats and progressives are very defensive because they're afraid they're, that the administration now is going to be looked at as locking these kids up. And they're very, they feel very defensive. So they're saying anything and everything to make it, you know, to make it look like we're not locking kids up, which we're, we're not. I think there's a whole different, we're talking about sec keeping kids secure. Um, these, these are 13 to 17 year old children. Personally, I, I don't think it's safe for them to, to be coming into a new country, probably not being able to speak the language. They are going to become uh, a target without a doubt. These kids are going to be a target for a lot of different people for a lot of bad reasons. And possibly keeping them secure. I mean, if you look at kids across America, they're under their parents' control. They, they are secured in their house. They're, they're not allowed to just go and leave and wander. You know, some 14-year-old kid isn't allowed to just go, oh, I'm going to Alabama today. I'll see you later, Mom and Dad. You know, they're not allowed to do that. And I kind of equate with what's going on with Biden right now. And I was reading up on these, these facilities by that they're talking about with these trailers that there's recreational facilities, there's a hairdresser, a barber, uh, hospital facilities. I don't know exactly how many are per trailer. 
And again, I'm talking, I'm pretty sure that these, these bars on the windows are to keep them safe inside and their possessions safe inside, to keep them secure, not to lock them up. I, I really think we're focusing too much. I, you know, I don't want to just, I don't, I don't want to get into a, into a little battle of what this word means or that word means. Uh, one of the things I remember, okay, I, I, I would admit myself into the mental health facilities when I was, I, I went in 15 times and I was on a 72, 72 hour lockdown. And that was what was best for me inside those. I know, I know, you know, I was an adult. It was a whole different facility, but I was locked down inside the hospital every time I went in. And it was a good thing for me. It kept bad people away from me and it kept me away from bad people. I wasn't in jail, but I wasn't allowed to leave. Um, these are 13 to 17 year old kids. And, and I agree with Bo on, I agree with Bo on a lot of this. I think the whole needs to, the whole thing needs to be expedited. I think the cost is insane. We, we need to streamline this. Um, even Bo admits that keeping them for a week or so isn't out of the question. Right now, I think the Biden administration is talking 20 to 30 days max. Um, I, personally, I, I, I agree with almost everything Bo said, but I just I don't look at these trailers as being anything anything even close to what we were talking about before with families being separated. And, and never being able to be reunited again. I, you know, I'm, I don't know all the specifics here, granted, but I, I think keeping the kids safe is the most important thing without, uh, you know, Bo was talking a lot about, about how people see the brown skinned kids. I'm not even concerned about that. The thing I'm concerned about is keeping these kids, keeping these kids safe from the people that would prey on them. Let me tell you this one last story in the South end of Waterbury. It's a city here in Connecticut. I got to know this kid that lived in the city, and he barely spoke English. English. We called him Flacco, and he was a runner. I didn't like. I didn't want to deal with him because I didn't want to deal get my supplies from a, a fifteen or sixteen year old kid. It, 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 it creeped me out. I didn't. I couldn't do that. I just. I would. I'd flip him a few bucks, and then I wouldn't deal with him. Uh, he couldn't barely speak English. I think he was from the D Dominican Republic. We called him Flacco. I think that means skinny. All right. This kid got recruited to be a runner, to make a few bucks. And this area, is a, it's a heavily Spanish-speaking area in, in South End of Waterbury. And it wasn't long before I started to see track marks on this kid's neck, where he was shooting into his uh, a carter, carter, carotid artery. Uh, it didn't end well for him, you know, and uh, that's a story that comes to mind. You know, this kid, he came here from the Dominican Republic and it doesn't take long for these kids to, to get, I mean, they, these kids are smart. They might be smart. They might have the best intentions, you know, the best will, like Bo was saying, walking a thousand miles, but there's a lot of bad people uh, that could make a lot of money off these kids. These kids are prime targets, and I, I just, I don't think it's that bad an idea. I don't think it's that bad just to keep them in a secure place, be it for, for a week, two weeks, or maybe even 30 days until they can get into a, a solid home. And that's another thing, too, is skipping these kids around, just keeping them, I, I think it's a good idea just to keep them safe. Uh, and we know, okay, we know, too, I, I was a 17, 16-year-old boy. You know, I made bad decisions every day. I was a smart kid, but I made bad decisions. I thought I knew everything about the world. I did. You know, I, I don't see anything wrong with keeping these kids in a secure place that's healthy for them. They could they could go to school just for, you know, 30 days max, if, if that needs to be the case. Um, I, I don't think emancipating kids from Panama or whatever, and just letting them loose, you know, letting some 16 or 17 year old kid loose in Texas or Alabama. And they, they can't even speak English. I don't think that's a good idea. Um, 
know, I realized that Bo talking about the Ritz and everything was a, a joke. He was trying to he was trying to make a point with the money. I think a boarding school is a good idea, but I think it's going to be hard because a lot of these kids probably don't speak any English whatsoever. And you're going to have to almost start a school from scratch, I would imagine, a Spanish-speaking school. Um, I don't think it's that easy. I don't know. In a perfect world, I think Bo's video would be great. You know, his ideas are great, but it's not a perfect world. And, uh, you know, like I said, I, I remember... I have a lot of bad memories from over two decades of, of seeing bad things happen to good kids. And uh, being in a secure detention center for a couple of weeks ain't a bad thing compared to a lot of the stuff that can happen to these kids out there. It's just a thought. <laughs> All right. You guys have a good Thursday.